Hello, welcome to Just the Dis. We talk about Blu-rays here, and this video will be a uh, sort of highlight, uh, if you will, of some of the May titles from Kino Lorber. Some stuff I'm uh, looking forward to checking out, and a few that I have already checked out that uh, I want to recommend. And um, I'm going to start with one that may seem surprising, but I'm actually a big fan of Cool as Ice uh, from 1991. Yes, uh, the Vanilla Ice movie. I remember, again, I'm dating myself, but uh, when I was in high school, I had a fast food job, and I can still in my mind remember some specific nights when uh, Ice Ice Baby was playing on the radio nonstop, and you just like, couldn't get away from it. And I do remember when this movie came out, and it was, you know, <laughs> it didn't go over well, we'll put it like that, and it was treated as a joke, and it is in some ways that, but... I also find it incredibly entertaining, uh, partially because the phenomenon of Vanilla Ice was such that he rightfully <laughs> uh, had a certain confidence, you know, in his persona, and I think in part because of the success of, you know, his songs, like, he was so meteoric in his rise. And I do find that interesting because in this movie, he's more or less playing himself, uh, it seems, or his persona at the time, excuse me. And there's something so, <laughs> I don't want to say charming because that's not the right word, but um, enjoyable in some ways about his performance because he's just so ridiculously confident that he is desired by the woman he wants is the coolest guy in the room at all times and you know is dressed like that you know and and that's not to say that at the time that wasn't a cool way to dress but I, I think even at the time it was a little questionable in my mind but regardless the brazen uh, arrogance of the character in the film is such that I I don't know and the plot is just so strange. It's like he has a concert in this small town and he's got like this sort of entourage and his buddies, their bikes break down. They have to get their bikes fixed. Um, they find a small like home shop that will do it. Uh, one of the repair guys, the mechanics is played by Sidney Lassick from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, among other things. And... So he meets, he ends up sort of meeting this girl. Uh, oh, what, who is she played by? I'm going to have to, maybe Kristen Minter, I think. And her parents are played by Michael Gross from Family Ties in the Tremors series and uh, Candy Clark, who was in tons of uh, great, you know, New World Pictures movies and other films. Uh, she worked with Jonathan Demi a lot. Um, and <laughs> she has a younger brother. Anyway. She has a boyfriend guy who's kind of stuffy and, you know, Vanilla Ice's character is kind of like the cool, re rebe rebellious uh, new guy that she's, for some reason, unfa unfathomably, uh, she's drawn to him. And their meet cute is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen where he um, is riding along this country road and she's riding a horse and he jumps his motorcycle impossibly. There's no way that he could do it uh, over the fence to impress her, I guess, and ends up like almost paralyzing her because the horse, you know, rears up and she falls on the ground. Um, and somehow he recovers from that. And not only does he recover from that, he recovers from the, one of the single creepiest scenes I've ever seen in a film where he sneaks into her room and wakes her up by feeding her ice. It's just alarmingly creepy, um, but somehow she doesn't scream or call the cops when she wakes up and instead sort of doubles down on her affection for him. Anyway, it is a bizarre film, absolutely strange, and uh, I just find it so entertaining. I've shown it to some people, and you know, you can just be like, oh, this is terrible or whatever, but there's an entertainment value for me to something like this, 
and the new transfer looks good. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's a new transfer, but the HD on HD it looks good. And another thing that's great about this Kino Blu-ray is that it has an audio commentary from film historians Alexandra Heller Nicholas and Josh Nelson. And now they've done a few tracks for Kino on these sort of 80s and I guess 90s uh, movies. They did one for the All Nighter, the Susanna Hoff film, and I really dug that track. And I dug this one as well. Like they're able to not make a joke out of it. You know, I mean, obviously they're aware of what the movie is, but at the same time, um, I really enjoy their rapport and I enjoy, you know, what they've dug up about the movie. And so I think this is a worthwhile release. And that's why I'm putting it at the top of this video. I was excited for Cool as Ice to come out on Blu ray because I do find it a movie that I can put on and laugh and enjoy um, in these times when I need that. So anyway, that's the first one. And we can get a little more serious with uh, The Hot Spot, a film noir you like, like you've never seen. And this is a Dennis Hopper film. And I think one that a lot of people don't know, uh, this is a brand new 2K master, uh, color graded and approved by cinematographer Uli Steiger. And yeah, as I said, it's from Dennis Hopper. And it's one that I don't want to go too deep on the plot with. But you have Don Johnson... And Virginia Madsen and uh, Jennifer Connelly. And it gets pretty sexy. And I think that if people remember this movie, they may remember it because of that. And I won't go into specifics, but um, it says uh, from the director of Easy Rider, the last movie, Out of the Blue, Colors and Backtrack comes this torrid and erotic neo noir starring Don Johnson, Virginia Madsen, and Jennifer Connelly. Exploding in a series of suspenseful twists and passionate encounters, this ingenious film will keep you guessing until its final shocking climax. Yeah, again, I don't really want to go plot heavy on this because I'd rather you see the movie. It definitely is uh, a very modern, if you will, version of a film noir in that it's very sexed up. And the stuff that would have been left out of a, a film noir from the 40s is definitely not left out of this film. So... What you have also is this nice slip case, which I love when Kino does those. Uh, and they have some reversible artwork, which is cool. Uh, and then this has an audio commentary from entertainment journalist and author Brian Reisman, who I'm really digging lately. I, he does uh, a good job. He comes prepared and tries not to leave a lot of dead air is really uh, doing some research and, and pulling out some cool stuff. So I, I dig his tracks. There's also an interview with co-star Virginia Madsen and an interview with actor William Sadler, who is also in this movie and who I think is one of the great character actors of this period. Also in the film, Charles Martin Smith, another guy that I'm a fan of. Um, and uh, so this is a good little disc, it seems. A, a nice modern film noir. Speaking of that kind of thing, we have The Night of the Following Day, which has Marlon Brando and Richard Boone. Richard Boone, to me, is one of the great, I don't want to say unsung, because he's known, but one of the great lesser-known heavies of, you know, the 50s and 60s. This movie's from 1969, and he just has this ability to play villains that are completely convincing and scary when they need to be charismatic in certain ways and he's the kind of actor that could stand up against somebody like Marlon Brando meaning like he could share the screen with him and doesn't get blown away he did the same thing with John Wayne and he's just a great actor so um, this one says the higher the stakes the higher the terror screen greats Marlon Brando uh, and Richard Brune star in this psych taut psychological thriller that examines the darkest impulses of the human psyche a gang of four professional criminals brazenly kidnaps a wealthy teenage girl, Pamela Franklin, uh, from an airport in Paris in a meticulous plan to extort money from the girlfriend's father. Holding her prisoner in an isolated beach house, the gang's scheme runs perfectly until their personal demons surface and lead to a series of betrayals that culminate in a furious and explosive climax. Um, that's all I'm going to say about it, and I think that's all you really need to know. This one has a Tim Lucas commentary, and we know how I feel about that. Always quality, always well-researched, always good stuff. 
Uh, it also has a commentary from the director, Hubert, Hubert Cornfield, who also did a really great noir called Plunder Road, which I think all of films put out on Blu-ray a while back, and I do recommend that. Um, so you get two of those, and then there's a Trailers from Hell from Joe Dante, which you can watch online if you'd like. Uh, but obviously Joe Dante is a fan of this movie, and that, to me, is always a big stamp of approval. So The Night of the Following Day, also out this month. Next we have Tank with James Garner and C. Thomas Howell and Shirley Jones. And um, this one, if I had to do a short sell, uh, it is like uh, another kind of uh, Legend of Billie Jean. Uh, it's from 1984, and now I can't remember. I think that predates Legend of Billie Jean. I want to say Billie Jean is 85. So the idea of you know somebody that is been sort of has been wronged. Uh, in this case, you have uh, C. Thomas Howell is the son of this. I want to say he's a retired army uh, officer, Sergeant Major Zach Carey. Um, he's oh, he's completing his final stint of duty at a post in a small southern southern town, and it says after defending a prostitute, he finds himself doing battle with the town's maniacal sheriff, played by G.D. Spradlin, who became known in the '60s and '70s for playing um, the really, you know, hard as nails evil coaches, and he's also really good in this role. He's just a great villain, just like. You do not like him, but he comes from a place of conviction. Like he believes in the bad things he's doing, you know, and the reasons he's doing them. So uh, C. Thomas Howell ends up in a prison camp because of this sheriff. And James Garner's character happens to own his own Sherman tank. Uh, and he busts it out of uh, the base where he keeps it and uses it to bust his son out of prison and then sort of goes on a journey to get, I want to say, to the state line so he can get away from the sheriff. Um, but it's it's definitely a fun little movie, and I remember seeing it on HBO a lot as a kid. So I'm a big fan of this one and looking forward to rewatching it. This has an audio commentary also by entertainment journalist and author Brian Reisman. What is Tank? Uh, Baxter. Now this one is via Scorpion releasing. But it's like, you know, it's a Kino co-release kind of thing. And this is a recommendation from my good friend Elric Kane. We talked about this on our Animals Attack episode. And I've always remembered this cover because obviously this dog looks a bit like uh, Spuds McKenzie. And I just remember seeing it and going, what is that? And it says, beware of the dog that thinks. And so I haven't seen this one, but Elric has told me it's, you know, from the point of view of this dog... Uh, he'll love you to death. Baxter, a sociopathic bull terrier, stars in this chilling French horror film. This is a foreign film uh, that blends thrills and black comedy into a truly original tale. The inner thoughts of a brooding Baxter reveal that he is quite unhappy with his situation, living with an elderly woman uh, who is afraid of him. In search of his ideal master, he successfully plots how to do away with her and attempts a similar plan when he becomes dissatisfied dissatisfied with his next owner. So it's like the antithesis of like the dog's life, jog, dog's journey kind of movie. Um, but yeah, so there he is, and there are some of his prospective owners. But Elric was a big fan of this one, and at the time we talked about it on Pure Cinema, it was not available on Blu-ray, and, and now it is. Region A Blu-ray, and it has an audio commentary with filmmaker Mark Savage. So I'm excited to check this one out after that recommendation. This looks really interesting. Like I again, I haven't seen this yet, but um, this is M.C. Escher Journey to Infinity. This is a documentary about the famous artist. Uh, I think we all know that image, and he did a lot of really other great sort of physics bending images. And he's also just been one of those people that I've been fascinated by my whole life because of the drawings and because of how interesting they are. This is another big one I always remember on the cover here. But I don't really know too much about him. And this says, uh, it tells the story of the world-famous Dutch graphic artist uh, who lived from 1898 to 1972. And it's equal parts history, psychology, psychedelia, 
Robin Lutz's entertaining, eye-opening portrait gives us the man through his own words and images, diary musings, excerpts from lectures, correspondence, and more, voiced by British actor Stephen Fry from Gosford Park. So that's cool. I like it when they can get an actor to read in the voice of someone like this uh, because it kind of gives a, an interesting perspective, you know? So we have... Uh, him reading it, and it says, while Escher's woodcuts, lithographs, and other printing techniques appear both original and playfully altered form, two of his sons, uh, George, 92, and Jan, 80, uh, or Jan, uh, reminisce about their parents, while musician Graham Nash from Crosby, Stills, and Nash uh, talks about Escher's rediscovery in the 1970s. The, folk, the film looks at uh, Escher's legacy, uh, one can see tributes to his work in movies, in fiction, on posters, on tattoos, uh, and elsewhere throughout our culture. Indeed, few fine artists in the 20th century can lay claim to such a popular appeal. And it's got a making up, uh, making of featurette, a behind-the-scenes uh, gallery, and some M.C. Escher home movies with Stephen Fry narrating those as well. So very much looking forward to checking out this documentary about M.C. Escher. Okay, this is another sort of co-release. Uh, this is through Cohen Media uh, and Kino, and it is a film noir double feature. Uh, you have Dirk Bogard and Margaret Lockwood in Cast the Dark Shadow, and then you have another one called Wanted for Murder. And I've seen neither of these. Uh, it says death and seduction are themes of these newly restored thrillers from the uh, golden age of British noir in Cast a Dark Shadow, Dirk Bogard, uh, stars as Teddy Bear, a smooth-talking cad who maintains a life of leisure by preying on a series of lonely, wealthy women. But the headstrong sister, Kay Walsh, of one of his late wives, is determined to bring Teddy's killing streak to an end. I like those kind of movies where a slimy, you know, villain like that has gotten away with it and is suddenly forced to realize that he is in trouble and is often taken down. So that should be a cool one to check out. And then it says, uh, Wanted for Murder, the polished exterior of a refined gentleman, Eric Portman, conceals the heart of a strangler. A young record shop clerk, Dulcie Gray, holds the key to his capture, which puts her at the head of the queue to become the next victim. I also like secret killer movies, movies where one person knows who the killer is and nobody else does and so they are the target and they can get no help because if they try to tell somebody about it without any evidence they kind of look crazy um, I'm not saying that's what happens here but I do just like the idea of that sort of trapped feeling that you get when you know something like that and you know that you are potentially in trouble um, so both of those sound really good and Cohen has done some great uh, releases thus far uh, of all kinds, but certainly older films. Um, just trailers and English subtitles, it looks like, but a nice double feature from Cohen uh, Film. And last but not least, uh, this is another Scorpion releasing title uh, with Gary Busey and, as you can see, uh, William Smith on the back there and Seymour Cassell. And this is one I, I don't think I've seen either, but uh, I've wanted to. This is a new HD master from a 2K scan of the inner positive. And uh, it says Buck Matthews, Gary Busey, returns to his rural hometown after serving in, uh, time in prison for a crime he didn't commit, wanting only to live in peace. Don't they always only want to live in peace? Um, he, let's see here, uh, is... It's irrevocably shattered when a sinister biker gang led by the vicious blade, William Smith, begins terrorizing the townspeople. When Buck's brave attempts to protect his family from the savage bikers results in tragedy, he embarks on a one-man war against his evil foes. And even though he's outnumbered and outgunned, he won't give up until the last body drops. Also starring Yafet Kodo, who recently passed away and who I adore. Uh, you can see Yafet Kodo on the back there. Um... <clears throat> Uh, Seymour Cassell, uh, Burt Remsen, and featuring the 80s hit song Eye of the Tiger by Survivor, now watch this film from a brand new HD master. So it will always be interesting to see, you know, a song that we equate with another movie. In this case, you know, what, Rocky 2 or 4? Or I don't even remember which one it started in, but uh, obviously we, we equate Eye of the Tiger with the Rocky films. 
and now we have a movie by this title that clearly wants to vie for your attention under the same song. Um, and it'll be interesting to see that play with all the emotional attachment I have to that song uh, in this context. But I do love William Smith. I think another great heavy in movies like Richard Boone, uh, not necessarily a successor to Richard Boone, but one of the great uh, you know, exploitation character actors of the 1970s. I mean, just look at his face. And he's, and he's, looks like he's bald in this one. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but he is always incredibly convincing and uh, quite the foe to go up against. And Gary Busey, I'm a big fan of. I just think he's a great actor and enjoyable in something like this. And I don't think I've seen too many movies where he's given this kind of an opportunity or this kind of a spotlight. So very ex excited to check out uh, Eye of the Tiger, which is also directed, by the way, by Richard Serafian, who did Vanishing Point, which is obviously a great, great cult movie from the 1970s. So in terms of just seeing further films from that director, I'm also excited about Eye of the Tiger. I think that's it. I think that's it for this uh, spotlight. And uh, I may try and do a few more from this month in some collection updates, but that's just a group of titles that I wanted to talk to you about that I think you should keep an eye out for, you know, potentially consider purchasing if they drew your interest at all. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.